if the universe began with the Big Bang, and scientists are now almost entirely sure that it did, then this means that the universe began to exist about 13.7 billion, or thousand million, years ago. It also means that when the universe did first burst into existence, it was an infinitesimally small dot. But that dot contained all the energy that would go on to make everything. With the beginning of the universe came the beginning of time. And once you have time, you can have change. And wow, did the universe change. In the first millionth of a second, it grew from the size of almost nothing to the size of our solar system. In a millionth of a second. As it expanded, it cooled to 10,000 million degrees. Sounds hot? Just imagine how hot it was at the beginning. Particles of matter started to form from the energy at this time. Later, those particles would cluster together to make atoms. But at first, the particles were speeding around far too fast. My name is Joyce and I do like physics and I'm interested in things like matter and antimatter. Well, antimatter is the opposite of matter. I find it interesting the way how matter and antimatter were made when the universe began and how most of it was annihilated and it's hard to make it or find it now. Well, it kind of makes it weird how we live in a universe made of matter, but somewhere out there there could be a universe made of antimatter and just the complete opposite to us. And there could be, for all we know, if aliens do exist, they could be made out of antimatter. And so that's just an interesting thing to think about. At last, 300,000 years later, things are starting to look a bit more ordinary. The universe is much bigger. The temperature is now 3,000 degrees, which might sound very hot, but at this point, it's cool enough for atoms to form. Those atoms are starting to gather together to form a star, but not our star. Our star, the Sun, comes later. According to this theory, it arrives 10,000 million years after the Big Bang, so about two-thirds of the way through the universe's timeline from zero to now. It all sounds amazing. But is it true? Well, it's very hard to test whether it is true, but I think there is a lot of evidence to back it up, so I do believe it, and it does seem like a, what's the word for it, a feasible theory. So, yeah, I do think it's, like, real and stuff. I'm often asked as a scientist, do I believe in the Big Bang? As though it's something that, you know, either you, you believe in or you don't. The fact is, it's taken a long time for scientists to accumulate evidence to suggest that the theory of the Big Bang is probably, in all likelihood, right. So we don't know for sure. Science is never about knowing something for certain. So I don't know for sure the Big Bang happened. Someone else, another Einstein, may come up tomorrow and say, no, actually, here's another way of explaining everything about the universe and the Big Bang didn't happen. And if he came up with better evidence to back up his theory, then I would stop believing that the Big Bang Theory was right. But for the moment, chances are, I think it's right. So most scientists are convinced for the moment by the Big Bang Theory. There's evidence that seems to support it, and it's good at explaining the relative quantities of the different elements that we have in the universe today. What about the question of whether God made the universe? Is that relevant here? If the universe began with the Big Bang, could it still have been made by God? Can you have both? Well, I think that the Big Bang was by God and that science and RS do fit together. And it's not a battle between the two of them. It's really just science backing up what religion has said. And that God, made, he did make the universe and that he kind of created the Big Bang or the Big Bang is the scientific answer to how the world was made. There are many topics on which science and religion both seem to have something to say. There's how the universe got here, how life began and what life is about. Sometimes when you dig into the detail of what they're saying, you can see that they're tackling such different aspects that actually you can have both. And I think one of the interesting ways of putting it is that I don't think science and religion are in conflict 
as long as they're not competing with each other. So if they're not in competition, there's no issue. These kinds of divisions, religion tells you how to live, science tells you how things work, science tells you how things work, religion tells you why things exist, these kinds of divisions seem to make a lot of sense. There's a great quote attributed to Galileo and it says, Scripture is intended to teach us how to go to heaven and not how the heavens go. OK, so there we are. Have we sorted it out? I don't think so. There are some places where it's very hard to see how someone can say that science and religion don't clash. Take the beginning of the universe. Science says there was a Big Bang, probably, and after that everything happened with one thing leading to another. But according to religion, God created it, and doesn't it say that he did everything in six days? Okay, so maybe the six days is an analogy or a metaphor for billions of years. But why say anything at all if it's not right? And if science can explain so much by referring to one thing leading to another and without a single mention of God, then does God need to be in the picture at all? Do we solve this by saying that God was at the beginning to set everything up and now he's taking it easy? Is he a God who's leaving us to it? If you're a scientist who doesn't believe in God, then these kinds of questions surely don't cause you too much of a headache. Science, which describes the natural world, is as much as you need to explain everything. For me, when I come, up, when I come across a scientific issue that looks like it might conflict with religious teaching, um, well, I guess I should say I've got a strange background because my mother's a devout Christian and my father is a Muslim. And I've sort of grown up with both teaching and fallen in the gap between, unfortunately, you might think. But I'm now an atheist, so for me, I look for answers within science and I don't need, personally, to look for answers from religious faith. But what if you're a scientist who does believe in God? And there are many scientists who do believe in God. So my name is Colin Humphreys. I'm Professor of Material Science in Cambridge University. Which is more important to you, science or religion? Um, in terms of the time I spend, I, I guess I spend a lot of my time on science. I'm a great believer in science. I probably work, you know, 60 hour week as many scientists do. Um, but in terms of what really matters to me, then it is my religion. And, uh, you know, if, if I had to choose one or the other, which hopefully I wouldn't, then I would choose religion because deep down that's what's really important, I think. And, and religion is, is really influences the way you live. So religion to me is actually more important than my science, even though my science is really important. So for scientists and others who do believe in God, it seems to me that there are some serious questions to tackle here. What do we make of religious stories that seem on the face of it to describe a very different picture to the one we're getting from science? If science explains so much without any reference to God, then where does God fit in? What kind of a God can you believe in if you're a scientist or someone who puts a lot of faith in science and what it says about the world? So, this is about God, and science, and whether they fit together, and what some of the serious thinkers are saying. Hello, we're Megan and Sarah from Rice and Anthony School, and we've come to talk to Ard Louis about the Big Bang Theory and the religion-science debate. So, I'm a physicist, but I'm a theoretical physicist, and that really means I try to explain what other people observe in experiments. And I use mainly methods of mathematics, so I write down equations, and I use computers, I do computer simulations to, to look at those kinds of problems. What is your opinion on the belief that some people have that science and religion are so separate that you can't, as it were, believe in both? And so I have a quite a, what we might call a high view of scripture. I think the scriptures um, are authoritative and I think they tell us the truth. But the real question is, is what kind of truth are they telling us? Now I think, for example, that the six days of creation are metaphorical. I'm the Reverend Dr. Rodney Holder. I started life by reading mathematics at Cambridge and then I did astrophysics at Oxford 
And a number of years after that, I trained for ordination and became a priest in the Church of England. So does that mean you think God made Adam and Eve? Human beings came about through a long process of evolution over um, thousands of millions of years. The Adam and Eve story in the Bible is a story uh, that's designed to give us a message, a theological message about God and his relationship with us and our relationship with one another. And the word Adam, incidentally, in Hebrew is the word for man. So it's something that's about every person uh, and every person's relationship with God. Do you think that science came first or God came first? So I think my belief in a God is a God who is all-powerful, who is everlasting if you like, and so almost by definition God comes first. And uh, then God created the universe and scientists believe that the Big Bang was the way he sort of started things off. And that may not be proved to be right, but that's what we believe at the moment. And scientists think there's nothing before the Big Bang, but maybe there was. So, you know, we, scientists are really pushing the limits here. Um, but God is from everlasting and God created the universe. And if the Big Bang was the start of the universe, this is when time started. This is when you sort of count time forward. And um, scientists are then trying to understand uh, the creation, the mechanisms, as it were, the way God acted. Um, but science cannot really say much about why God created the universe. Why did God create us? And so religion answers these why questions. And um, what the Bible teaches and what Jesus taught is that God loves us and wants to interact with us. And God is the overall creator. And science came afterwards and studies the creation. Hi, my name is Alex Mason, I'm from the Cambridge School, Birmingham. Um, we've arranged to meet Ard and uh, interview about science and religion. Uh, so where does God fit into all of this? Well, I think one of the really important things is that God sustains the world. It says that in the Bible, in Colossians, for example, or in Hebrews, that God sustains the world. And what that means for, I think, traditional Christian view of that is to say that if God were to stop sustaining the world, it wouldn't just slowly grind to a halt as you know, their laws of nature slowly like, let it die a heat death, it would actually stop existing. And uh, a sort of illustration of this, if you think of um, a singer singing a song, then if the singer stops singing, the, st the song stops to it doesn't exist, right? So, so um, and, and the universe is a bit like that. God is upholding the universe all the time, active within the universe. And um, so he didn't just do a big bang and leave things to, to themselves. But scientists or, or Christians believe that God didn't just create the universe and abandon it, but he's upholding the universe all the time. <laughs>